Hello there, my name is Douglas Rumbaugh. For a very long time, I've used Hugo to build my personal website, uh, more specifically the Hugo academic theme, which was later renamed to Wowcomy by the author. Lately, I've wanted to get away from that for a variety of reasons, which I might talk about later. As a result, I started working on my own site generation framework uh, with a focus on pure HTML and CSS, no JavaScript. I don't really need it. Figured I'd try and get away from it. In doing this, I finally sat down and actually learned HTML properly. I haven't touched HTML since the early 2000s, um, and even then it was very rudimentary. And as I started properly learning it, I've come to a few conclusions about markdown-based web authoring, which is very much the standard approach of making websites these days. Is you type your text in markdown, and then you run it through something like Pandoc, to translate it into HTML, which is used for the web page. This is part of a broader solution, which will usually involve a templating engine and stuff to deal with boilerplate uh, text, which is a big problem for HTML as well. Uh, however, I think that the, the markdown to HTML translation is largely orthogonal to that. So this is not me ranting about site generation or things of that nature. This is me specifically talking about the workflow of writing a page in markdown and translating that to HTML. And I've come to realize that this has some significant problems. So what are these problems? Well, here's an example of a page. And this, this, is, this text over here is what this looks like in, say, Markdown, and then translated to HTML and displayed. This is what you will see. So in Markdown, when we're talking about text formatting, so this is presentation all information about the text, you can, you can tell Markdown that the text should be in italics or bold or in constant width typewriter font, for example, by using some combination of one asterisk, two asterisks, or backticks. And then those will translate into HTML. Uh, for example, here you can see the italics will translate using the EM for emphasis tag, and the bold will translate using the, the strong tag. Now the problem with this is that there is a significant mismatch between the semantic expressiveness of HTML and the semantic expressiveness of Markdown. When I say semantics, what I mean is we're not describing how the text should look, but we're describing what the text is. For an example of why this is important, let's just look here at this. I have a variety of formatting here, which is all rendered in HTML now using semantics of emphasis, be it standard emphasis or strong emphasis. But if we look at what's emphasized, the reasons why it's emphasized are different. In fact, most of this actually shouldn't be emphasized at all. For example, on Hemlocks is in italics because it's the title of a book. Suga Canadensis is in italics because it's a scientific name. These two things should always be in italics for English style, but aren't actually emphasized. They're just set in an italic typeface because that's the rule, basically. Whereas the word very here is in fact emphasized. It's in italics because I want it to be emphasized. Likewise, here we have another instance of the scientific name. The word tree here is strong, not because I'm emphasizing the word tree, but because I'm following a convention that a lot of people use when they're defining a word. I'm going to define the new word. I'm going to mark the word in bold and then follow it with a definition of the word. Whereas here, not an animal is, again, this is emphasized strongly. I want strong emphasis here. HTML provides you with the ability to mark these, this semantic information correctly. Markdown does not, which means that when you translate from Markdown to HTML, you lose all of that semantic information, and you're simply stuck with varying types of emphasis. OK, but my page looks correct, so why is this a problem? Well, there are three significant issues with this. Uh, the first is that your page might actually not look OK. And the reason for this is because if you would like to change the style sheet for your website, losing the semantic information makes it harder to style it correctly. For example, let's say I wanted to represent emphasis using red Roman text rather than italic text. Well, you can override that pretty easily in a style sheet. I could just change the style on emphasis to be red and normal font style. And if I do that, when you enable my style sheet, 
you'll see that it's going to have a pretty comic result. At least I think it's comic. And this is something that I have seen on so many websites. And it, it's gotten to the point where it irritates me, actually. You see what the problem is, though. I want my emphasize text here to be in red. But because I'm using the EM tag for everything that's in italics, what this means is that I, I now am um, rendering my book title in red. And I'm rendering scientific names in red. And that's not correct. These things should be in italics, not red. But I don't have the semantic granularity to make that distinction on my page anymore because Markdown doesn't support it. If we were to do this quote unquote correctly using the appropriate HTML tags, this isn't a problem. On Hemlocks, I'm going to mark using site tags because it's the title of a book. I'm going to say that my Suga Canadensis should be in italics because scientific names should be in italics. Perhaps a more correct way to do this would actually be to define a span with a scientific name class and use that, but that's okay. I'm just going to use italics. That's good enough for this. Likewise, this should be in italics. And my, my very here remains an emphasis because it's emphasized. Now, if I use the appropriate tags, what you'll see is that the problem goes away. My book title is now correctly in italics. My scientific names are now correctly in italics. And my emphasized text is correctly read. This isn't something you could do with Markdown it, for good reason, of course. One of the whole points of Markdown is to simplify the markup into sort of a minimum viable. So you, you can very easily do things without having to worry about this. Uh, which means that there isn't a way to fix this in Markdown because to introduce all this, these semantic categories into Markdown would effectively ruin Markdown. It would just turn it into another syntax for HTML, at which point why bother? So this is a fundamental problem with this idea of using a simplified markup and translating to HTML. By doing that, you lose access to all of these semantics, which even for presentational purposes, as you can see here, are quite important. But it's actually worse than that. If it were just a matter of your site looking funny because you applied a style sheet to it. Okay. But this actually can hurt accessibility as well. The reason for this is because user agents are going to use the semantic information carried in these tags to determine how they're going to display or represent that content. We can see this in a visual user agent right now. My citation is, is in italics and, and what have you. But there are non-visual user agents too. Screen readers are a classic example that are very important. And one way that a screen reader might choose to emphasize text, for example, is to speak it either louder or in a different tone of voice, right? The problem is if I go ahead and use M tags on everything, what that means is my screen reader is going to emphasize everything. We don't necessarily want on hemlocks to be emphasized here. It's simply in italics because it's the title of a book. Well, our screen reader won't know that, so it will emphasize it. Even worse, what if I decided I wanted my whole text to be bold because I think that it looks good for whatever that particular use case is? Well, now my entire web page is going to get shouted at someone using a, using a screen reader. And that's a problem. Using this markdown to HTML can significantly hamper accessibility because the correct use of these semantic tags is very important to the correct representation of our content in non-visual user agents. And those things do exist and they are important for a large number of people. As a third point, having more semantic information is also potentially useful for search engines. Now, because of the current state of the web that we're at where none of this is actually used, I don't know whether any search engine actually takes advantage of these semantic tags when it's ranking pages. But let's bump down to this last sentence here and take a look at these strong tags as an example here. I'm not strong emphasizing the word tree. I'm defining it. And so as a result, rather than using the strong tag, I can use the DFN tag for define. What this tells the user agent is that I am providing a definition for this word. And now many of these tags actually have attributes that you can use to provide additional information. I'm not even going to go into that. We're just going to use the appropriate semantic tags here. Now, by default, this definition tag is going to render it in italics. So I did adjust the style to make it bold instead because that's what I want. But that's the power of these semantic tags is you get much more granularity on how you format your document. Um, in any case, 
now if we look at this, my page looks the same, but I'm semantically distinguishing the, the word I'm defining from strong emphasis. And what this would mean, theoretically, is that any scraper looking at my page, be it for a search engine or, God forbid, some sort of an AI nonsense thing, is going to know that this page contains a definition for the word tree. And so that it could use that information to better rank my page when someone is looking for the definition of that word. It lets the, lets the automated systems know that there's a definition here as opposed to the word just appearing. This is another potential benefit of using the correct semantics. Okay, so that's the problem. What's the solution? Obviously, the solution is not we should just write everything using straight HTML again like the good old days because there are significant problems with authoring in just HTML. Uh, notably, there's a lack of an include mechanism, which means, for example, if I want my header to appear on all of my pages, I have to copy and paste that on every single page. And then if I decide I want to change my header for some reason, it's royal pain in the butt to do. Uh, additionally, HTML doesn't have any sort of a templating engine, so I could. I, it's difficult to say define just convenient shorthand for certain semantic categories or presentational categories even. And so those aspects of site generation are still valuable. But as I said at the beginning, I think that those concepts are largely orthogonal to Markdown. In addition to that, there are aspects of Markdown that are legitimately useful without compromising semantics. Some Markdown elements do map very cleanly onto HTML semantic tags. For example, paragraph tags, being able to distinguish a paragraph with a blank line and having that automatically insert the paragraph tags for you is really useful. What I found with writing HTML documents like this is that the paragraph tags can be a little bit annoying. Uh, it's not that annoying. It's not very much work, but it is something that could very easily be automated. Likewise, for things like lists, if you just want a simple enumerated list, markdown syntax for that is very nice and it translates very cleanly onto HTML. So not all of Markdown is necessarily bad, but using the, shall we say, presentational aspects of Markdown is incredibly problematic. Another good example of this is a block quote. So a, a block quote element in Markdown is gonna translate into a block quote HTML tags like this. And now of course, it's called block quote, and so it's clear what it's for, is it's for block quotes, but because Markdown doesn't have anything else for supporting, say, indented blocks, what winds up happening, I found, is that block quotes get used an awful lot for indented blocks, which aren't actually block quotes, which means you're, you're then later tagging that indented block with the wrong semantics. This isn't a quote, this is just some text I want to be indented. Whereas if you're using HTML, you could very easily define an indented paragraph or a div or something like that and style it that way. You can't even do that in Markdown. You're just stuck with this block quote thing. So block quotes get thrown all over the place for things that aren't quotes, which then dilutes the meaning of the element because it's supposed to be a quotation, not just indented text. And this happens over and over and over again, as, as we've seen. I don't even get me started on the code blocks. So using straight HTML to tag the semantics on the elements with perhaps some markdown generation assistance for common things is, I think, the way to go. Now, of course, you can do this in a standard markdown-based generator. Most of them will allow you to add HTML tags, but because they also allow you to not, they don't expose any of this information to you, and they allow and facilitate a number of very bad habits that would be trivial to avoid if those generators did not support things like single asterisk, double asterisk, fixed width text, etc. And if they forced HTML in those cases. And that's really my point, is that static site generators or other content authoring suites that use Markdown as the, the definition language for formatting a page are causing significant damage to the internet at large for accessibility reasons, for denying opportunities for search engine optimization and things like that, and also just making presentation harder and resulting in some really funny goofs in presentation, like we saw with the EM tag. I don't think we should just do away with the whole paradigm. There's a lot of useful things that can be salvaged, but I do think we have to consider if it would be worth it to 
skip over these problematic elements, I think that, it, that doing that would greatly enhance the quality of the semantic markup on the internet. The features are there, we just have to use them. And this is why I think that markdown-based site generation is harmful to the internet at large. What do you think? Uh, am I just ranting into the void about something that's not very important? I, I'm, it's important to me, <laughs> but maybe it's not for the majority of people. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments section down below. It'd be a very interesting conversation to have. Uh, as always, I hope that you found this video interesting and useful, and I'll see you in the next one, whatever that may be.